So it is true to say that we've got a savage sweet soccer man. <laughs> <laughs> is that a draw? That's the way you draw it out, okay? <laughs> uh, Lester Paul Pelham got out in studio. Let's bring in the third titan. Uh, Peter Blood. Uh, everybody uh, who's been following this culture in any way, one way or the other, know, of course, that if they're talking about entertainment and they're talking about following what's going on, uh, it's going to happen through you, man. How are you, brother? Hey, morning. Morning to the listeners of 107.7. It is a great thing to have all, all, all three of you in the studio. So I talk about, I, I mean, we've got Les and Paul right next to you. Pelham got out right here next to you. You remember when these guys actually came on the scene? And I know you would remember because I happen to know you, um, <coughs> your, your roots. So don't even pretend you don't. <laughs> Do you remember when these guys came in, particularly as it relates to what was happening with the music and the injection that the music needed and what they brought to it? Well, uh, mm. I would remember Pelham, well, from Boot, actually, because that's my cousin. And um, less than I met afterwards, and I remember the 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 opposition, their brand of music back in the seventies was receiving from well, the Calypsonians, the the, the so-called Calyps, the bona fide Calypsonians and um, musicians, the public t at large, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I remember some fun times with uh, Roots in particular, mm -hmm. and some not so fun times. You know, people really used to reject that mm. soca music back in the early days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Let's talk about that rejection. Uh, maybe, maybe this time I brought Leston back inside of here. Leston, did you come at the... I, I know Pelham was right there for it because he was really right there for that whole um, um, evolution uh, out of the... Uh, out of, uh, out of this uh, the calypso into the soca, you were in music a long time, so you understood that calypso thing. But when you when 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 the evolution came and folks started moving towards the soca, which you of course um, excelled in, were you feeling uh, a, a pressure because folks were saying what your guys doing, or maybe I should do it like Kichi? What I'm what I'm what I'm doing? They died some music. <laughs> 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 I mean, were you were you were, were you during that period, and what was it like that whole transition thing? Well, funny enough, when I came into the business, I used to emulate a lot of people, a lot of rangers that was around at that time. I used to emulate mm -hmm. things that Pelham did, that nah. Bradley did, that Adikota did, mm -hmm. or, although he didn't like me too much because <laughs> it was <laughs> said that he, you know, he, he, he was like this young fellow to say, coming and taking over all my work. You know, mm -hmm. So he, he didn't like... This is Ed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not Ed. Mm -hmm. oh. that, that was Adiko too. Oh, that was the <laughs> Professor. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, but I learned a lot from him by listening. Mm -hmm. not, not by him mm -hmm. telling me anything, but by li listening to the music that he did. So, Pelham Gara just, just preceded you by a few years. Um, and so, so, when you were coming in and you were listening to all the influences, and you heard what Pelham was doing, i.e., you take the tambour and you take the rudder, mm -hmm. and they maintain the, 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 the strong clips. I mean, Maestro came in as a thing inside of a big stable, right? And wh wh what did you learn coming out of the, uh, uh, the, the Pelham and Goddard era that, 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 that took you and in any way tempered or influenced what you were doing? Well, um, Shaped is a better word, yes. Okay. There was um, the, 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 the horns I listened to. Mm hmm you know that that I got from um got a little thing he here and there and then the keyboard with the synthesizer mm -hmm. you know, I I was a my strong point was really keyboards and and synthesizers and mm -hmm. that time mm -hmm. I like used to go like crazy I used to buy every synthesizer that came out the <laughs> latest synthesizer <laughs> yes. I had about 16 synthesizers at mm. a time and the girl who was living with, she she was like, "Go live with hey, your synthesizers." <laughs> Go live with your synthesizers. <laughs> Why are you buying all the synthesizers? <laughs> so you you wouldn't really understand what what, what really going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I I was I was a freak. So it is true to say that out of uh, all those who went before you, including those who were growing with you, like Pelham, you learned you 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 fine tune your soca there. Yeah. Before yeah. I get to Baron, I want to go to Pelham because he was one of the people responsible for this synthesizer thing we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Beaver Henderson. Hi, yeah. Beaver. Good morning to you, man. <laughs> 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 right. I gotta say good morning to Beaver because he's crazy. Uh, yeah. We probably try, we tried to probably try to get him on the phone in a minute. But the introduction of the synthesizer into yeah. the Calypso? Into Calypso, when people thought that yeah. you know that was an outrage because they thought you were going in a different direction, it was a new sound. Well, it was it, working, but 
it was a, a, a new song is a is a mm-hmm. instrument that could bring any tone to you you know let them those time people were saying strings in the music mm-hmm. you remember you had people like Buddy or listening Barry White and all these people orchestrating b- uh, strings yes so everything they wanted strings in the song but the, um, the synthesizer had that so you had things like the or app of me the the who uh, what is that the honor the something honor. yeah <laughs> and um the, uh, all of this was before the kills well right yeah and and yeah, um i crazy. remember when i was doing um uh when we do sugar boom boom for yes. that matter mm-hmm. we had a synthesizer that could split in two mm-hmm. but, but only one track on the on the one more track available on the tape Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. on the machine, um, and I split it in two, and I play that. How I come to play, pa pa da, pa pa da 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 da, and my left hand play, pa pa da pa 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 da pa pa. Don't the first time the two things come on one track, they on you know, okay, like a split, you know, mm-hmm. like um that. So the synthesizer was experience too, and um, at that time you used to have to go and um tune it with some knobs and get the 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 the, the, the partials working. And get the envelope song going. Up. That all kind of different things, you know. Mm-hmm. So they get mm-hmm. one tune. You had to do a lot of tuning with this knob different and that knob and that knob. Mm-hmm. And they get one tune. Yes. You know? Okay. 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 So okay. that was a, a work, mm-hmm. but it was kind of exciting too, you know, when you get the tune and you hear it in the music. But it's really amazing where they have come now because now you don't have to tune any knobs. What you instead do right. is you can hit a vocal instruction to tell it what kind of tone you want to sound. Right. This is <laughs> or, right. or you just drop a sample, sample inside sample of there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. But so, soca music, uh, many argue, is a good form. This is where I'm going to bring in Leston Paul and, and, and Pelham in this discussion. Peter, I still have a lot of things about Carnival to talk to uh, you about. But let's just stay and, 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 and finish the frame of the sound itself. Because many said soca should not be categorized as calypso. They say that calypso is calypso and soca is soca. Uh, what, what is your view on that as, as, well, as arrangers? Um, the same format of verse and um, calypso, how calypso had verse and chorus and verse and chorus, the same format that the calypso now would have used. Mm-hmm. It's just that the, the rhythm behind it, but it, and if you listen, the music you're seeing just now, how, it, how the horn shape. Mm-hmm. around Baron voice or my show voice you know mm-hmm. and and all these other um elements like imagine Tony Vosey playing guitar inside of there and he will play some hook lines and all that before Calisto uh, uh, Calistonian win won that before that mm-hmm. he will mm-hmm. want the guitar just to strum you know mm-hmm. and we used to do different tracks although you strum before you'll come and play some hook lines on the guitar mm-hmm. and um the synthesizer mm-hmm. will play some nice little parts and all that so um but the the format of the song was still voice and dizzy voice and dizzy chorus mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. it had a time we will break it down to uh, uh rhythm alone all right um the dj did like that because they used to mix <laughs> of course it made it like easy for us <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that even used to mix yeah. it so it had mm-hmm. a lot of little formats that we used to use that require the music now because that's one of the things about um, um and Peter, Peter is smiling in the corner. That's one of the things that happened. The question of how to bring the Calypso into the new, the younger generation, and how to bring it into the parties where they can jam to it. Now, the, 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 the older folks in the carnival, they were jamming anyway. And young yeah. folks were jamming also, however, to bring it, I was <clears throat> around at that time, and, and how to bring it into the, the, the young folks' ear, that whole breakdown and the drum breaks and stuff, yeah. that is what really worked for them. Uh, Peter, you were observing this just before I go to you. S- stick with Leston here. So, Leston, we are into the soca, the soca thing. Did you have a pressure coming at you because of this uh, outside of your little battle with what <clears throat> you allegedly stole from the professor? Um, <laughs> <laughs> outside of that part, did you have any pressure because of the direction you wanted to take the music? Because uh, you, at that point, at what point did you hook up with J- J- Julian Williams in, in, in New York? Because I know a lot uh, of your productions came out of that. Came out of there, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that was in the 80s after Ralston Charles. All right, so let's the, let's talk about you and the early days of, of, of Soka then. You had a lot of pressure with this change of form because uh, you know as Pelham just identified it is the same thing but a lot of folks thought it was something different you would do into the art form they thought you were destroying it they thought you were changing it well I, I was changing it <laughs> I was changing it definitely I was because um when I had my when when I had my way I did things differently 
mm-hmm. in terms of going in the studio and doing things. They they would um, write all the charts for the bass and stuff and bring it for the bass people to play and stuff. I wouldn't do that. I would. I used to play bass on most of the tracks. And mm-hmm. I did it not because mm-hmm. I was selfish. I did it because I alone had the vibe. Let me explain that to our listeners. Uh, roughly translated, Pelham is trying to stay very um, cool about this. What he did was he fired a lot of musicians. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's the truth. I mean, because Leston would, Leston would go there. He would do the strings. He would yeah. do the bass. He would yeah. do the, the, the horns. Yeah. He would do the keyboards and the percussions all on, on, on a machine. Well, it wasn't the machine as yet. Yeah. I would tell you how that machine came about. You mean Roland? <laughs> Not Roland. Not Roland. Roland, Roland the, the Lynn. The, no, Lynn, the Lynn, that's right. The Lynn, yes. that's right. Yes. That, that, mm-hmm. came, that came about accidentally mm-hmm. from Byron Lee track that I did called Tiny Whiny. Mm. When we was in Jamaica laying down the tracks, Errol Wise was to do the drums. The uh, Errol Wise, another yeah, unsung yeah, hero. Yeah, great, right. great drummer, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he didn't come to the studio mm-hmm. on time. Uh, our pass. Okay, uh, and that is Errol White. Right. right. <laughs> and and, Errol, right, and Errol, was, Errol was having fun at the, ho- at the hotel in Kingston. Yes. So th- there, was a, 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 there was a drum machine called the DMX drum machine DMX, mm-hmm. that was in mm-hmm. the studio. And Byron Lee only used to use that as a clock, as a clock timing. Kind of simply kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I say, I say, man, we mm-hmm. we can't wait on Errol again. Is is about a, a hour we are here. So I say, you know what we'll do? I'll program the beat, and I program the beat, and we lay down the track. And Byron Lee came in. He asked who playing. I say, well, there's a guy called DMX because <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. Errol and he and he ain't a rapper either. <laughs> somewhere around. So Byron Lee say. But 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 the thing sounding real real good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when Errol mm-hmm. came now, Errol asked me, "Who playing drums?" I tell him, "Well, it's <laughs> DMX, DMX that play DMX. drums." <laughs> you understand? And Byron Lee t- told him that he not using him again. He used DMX. The DMX drum machine <laughs> on the track, and that was the beginning and the mm-hmm. end of Errol Wise being in the studio. As a drummer. Pelham, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to feature uh, DMX right uh, now. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll pull up a little bit of DMX so you all can hear what he's doing on the drums. <laughs> 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 this is DMX. <laughs> <laughs>